Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Amy. That was, that was very kind of you. Um, as Jen said this morning when she kicked off the day, I mean, this is great, right? It, it is great. It's great. Yeah, it is. Yeah, look, it's great to be here uh, at this time and in this place, united as empowered climate leaders when our communities need us the most. Our communities need us to work for them to increase resilience in the face of climate change impacts. Our communities need to work with them to capture the economic opportunities that come with the climate transition in a way that leaves no one behind. Um, look, I feel really grateful for the climate leaders that we've heard since the conference uh, began. As someone that spent a lot of my career in the Pacific Islands, it was wonderful to hear the voice of the large ocean states uh, here, here in the room. I also uh, was really impactful for me to hear yesterday's discussion with Zahira and Eddie about not assuming disadvantage, but to see potential. Uh, also, multiple speakers also stressed how we need to check our expectations on climate literacy. Um, I heard that a number of, number of times in the parallel sessions and here in this room. To, um, to think about how we expand the climate leadership circle in a way that's actually inclusive for our fellow professionals, um, as well as the broader community. As Amy was saying, we have been a proud partner of TCI over the last year. We've very, we've very much enjoyed it. Uh, Amy may, might not have told you, but there might have been some mimosas uh, in uh, at the Breakfast of Climate Champions, plus or minus. Um, and also, we were super proud to help design the pavilion at COP27, which was really the center for supranational action uh, at, uh, uh, from, from the US at the COP. What is really clear is that the effects of climate change are upon us. Here in Los Angeles, climate change is perhaps the most obvious through extreme heat waves and droughts punctuated by climate whiplash events that swing our climate state from one condition to another. What is also clear, and we heard that really clearly today, is that there is now significant momentum in the climate transition, empowered by all levels of government, and we're seeing critical investments in the clean energy transition, as well as scaling the electricity grid, powered by more renewables, including offshore wind. Climate change effects are here, and the significant momentum in the transition to resilient solutions. And I would just shout out through TCR, uh, Gene's presentation this morning. Wasn't, it, wasn't, he, wasn't he fantastic? What a, what a climate leader he is. Right after lunch, my colleague Becky Drake uh, is going to be facilitating a dialogue on pathways to offshore wind here in the US and highlighting examples with her colleagues and, and uh, panelists on how to decarbonize the grid, sharing examples of, of how to think through our region's unique set of challenges when it comes to offshore wind-powered renewable energy. Climate action solutions discussed by us all at this conference will demonstrate the momentum for change is being driven by a critical alignment between business, government, and nonprofits. Perhaps more meaningfully, there is also broad recognition that this moment requires an equitable climate transition for all communities and its members. By centering equity in everything that we do, we can achieve the deeper level of decarbonization that is required for us to meet our net zero targets and address the most pressing challenges that hinder us from building climate resilient communities and infrastructure. As climate leaders, equitable climate transition is achievable when business, government, and nonprofits are aligned. At Arup, we are striving to deliver on our mission that sustainable development is everything. We action this by taking a multidisciplinary approach to our projects, enabling us to collaborate, partner, and ideate solutions with our clients that in turn solve the most complex challenges presented by climate change. By working together, we are able to bring ideas into tangible reality. And this drive is what distinguishes every one of you, every person here at CLC. 
We endeavour to shape a better world by making sustainability happen, and we do that with the mindset of ensuring that fundamental data that allows us to derive actionable insights and supports a truly equitable climate transition. Sustainable development means solving complex climate challenges with a multidisciplinary approach. Um, that was clearly on, uh, on display yesterday with my colleague Heather Rosenberg in the, in the panel uh, with uh, Eddie and Zahira, where she talked about her work with equitable and resilient decarbonized communities, focusing on the complex relationships between decarbonizing existing building stock to create a net zero future while creating and preserving affordable housing. So we're not solving for one crisis, the climate crisis, we're solving for multiple crises at the same time. Similarly, Arab principal and fellow Aaron McConaughey explored yesterday the need for enhanced standards to standardize and verify decarbonization at a granular scale in the built environment, which will exceed, uh, aid the acceleration of industry-wide decision-making around low-carbon solutions. Communities, in our experience, benefit when we as climate leaders engage in consistent, open, and standardized practices that promote equitable, decarbonized solutions. At Arup, we made an important decision to assess our global building design portfolio using whole life cycle carbon techniques. Our focus on these assessments has allowed us to estimate emissions across our global building design portfolio. This carbon handprint, as we call it, for our building design work is estimated to be 350 times greater than our organizational carbon footprint, including scopes one, two, and three. Now, we think this is clearly unacceptable. So at COP27, we announced our ambition to use these techniques to accelerate decarbonization of the built design work, our built design work, and to pursue achievement of the goals of the UN high-level climate champions 2030 breakthrough outcome for the built environment. Arup is calling on all other actors and collaborators across architecture, engineering, and construction sectors to work together to establish open and comparable whole life cycle carbon data sets. Arup is committed to these measurement me methods, excuse me, across our global building design business. We recognize the value that data can bring our partnerships and collaboratives and how it can help us reimagine our entire fundamental theory of change, expanding what progress can look like within our shared built environment. This is the reason why we are all here at CLC together, to shape, strengthen, and recognize the value of our relationships and their ability to drive transformational change. By honoring our relationships we, that we have with one another and focusing on the communities we serve, we can accelerate the, the transition uh, that this inflection point requires, while also empowering the next generation of our climate leaders. As climate leaders, we have a shared responsibility to accelerate the change uh, to meet the need of the communities that we serve. We can still chart a path for a future that is not predetermined. And we believe that the last decades of climate activism have made a difference and will continue to as we recognize tangible actions across generations. Here at Arup's LA office, we will soon welcome our next cohort of summer interns who have told us clearly that sustainable development was integral in their decision to join us. Emerging professionals are not only asking us to do this work, but they're demanding it. Climate change is here, and fortunately, the next generation of climate change leaders are also here to pick up the pace. Look, before I finish, what I want to do is just put your knives and forks down, just for a second. What I'd, love you, what I'd love you to do is just take a beat and just look at your colleagues at the, at the, around the table. All right? Just recognize, recognize the colleagues that you know already. Just give them a, a nod. Anyone that you don't know, also give them a nod without it being creepy. And just 
would you commit to me and commit, commit to TCR and each other that what you'll do is, is that you'll ask, uh, when I finally shut up, uh, what, what are you doing as a climate leader and how can we work together to accelerate the equitable climate transition that our communities demand? Thank you.